Hello and welcome to Indie Life Adventures. This is Nick. I'm Dory and we are on the evening of day 14 of our Costa Rican adventure. We fly home tomorrow on day 15. We are in San Jose in a lovely Airbnb that is a drastic difference from the one we stayed in last night. And last night we were awoken at 4.50 a.m. to a sound that I think Nick is going to demonstrate for you. Um, not this time. We'll demonstrate it later. <laughs> uh, I'm still working on it. He's still but... working on it. But needless to say, the howler monkeys surrounded us this morning and woke us up just in a nick of time to go see the sunrise. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we had a five-hour drive to get from Puerto Viejo to San Jose, and I did the driving, and for five hours, Nick has, I would say, perfected the sound of the howler monkey. So perhaps, if by the end of this video, he's had enough rum and coke, maybe he will demonstrate huh. the howler monkey howl for our friends and family. Oh, well, I better start. <laughs> So, uh, it is actually early, like it's 6.17, but I am just spent. Holy cow, like it was a hell of a drive. Like, I honestly don't know how long we were on the road. It said it was going to be five hours. And then it just kept... It felt a bit longer. It kept getting longer. I didn't yeah. realize we were crossing a mountain between there and here. And it was so sunny and beautiful on the... I can't even get my east and west. To be on the east side. On the east side of the mountain. And then the, the moment. Leeward, seaward, I believe. The leeward. I, I believe so. The moment we crossed over the crest of the mountain, the rains came. It was as if the mountain was preventing the rain clouds from getting over to the Caribbean side. Um, I can also say with heartfelt sadness, like it was so hard to depart the Caribbean side. Like, I know we only spent two nights there, but I loved it. Like, I just didn't want to leave. It was sunny, beautiful, the water was warm, the sand was gorgeous. It, it hurt to leave. Yep. Um, so, Dory had her first full day of driving. She says she's yes. exhausted. I know, I it is she, tiring. I think she understands. <laughs> Uh, the plight of oh. having to drive in Costa Rica. Um, even worse, so is in the city. I oh, the city is, is wild. Uh, yeah, it's insane. And it doesn't help if it's raining. Yes. And uh, everywhere you turn, there's a motorcyclist that's trying to skirt around you. Oh, yeah. Like when you're. In every blind spot you got. Oh, yes. Because so. there will be some roads where it's two lanes, like going in the same direction. And motorcyclists will be on the left and right of both cars in the lane. Like, they're everywhere. You cannot switch lanes without looking for motorcyclists. Like, they're crazy. And there were even some bicyclists oh, yeah. cutting yeah. through traffic. Yeah. And uh, it, it was, it was um, intense. Oh, yeah. Especially, <laughs> there was one time I had passed up my turn and I'm like no problem I'll just whip in at the next block and totally it was a one way and it was a very congested one way with the cars coming toward me um, so I hopped like on the curb and waited for a clearing and then like did a oh three hell like you think it was points. just three points? three points it was a tight squeeze to get turned back around but that was pretty um, intense in the rain in the traffic yeah, and it down. just had, it really just started raining at yeah, that point. Yeah, turning down a one-way street. So. so, yeah, but we're here. We're safe. Like, I didn't hit anything. Yeah, we went out. We got dinner after we got here and got yeah. things unloaded. And, um, we're so, in for the night. But, yeah, the drive was good. It's beautiful. Once you crest the top of the uh, uh, the mountain, you get to see San Jose down in the valley. And uh, I guess kind of in the valley. It's down in elevation, so it's kind of hanging out in mm -hmm. there. But um, no, uh, we went and got dinner. It was good. Uh, just nachos at some little, um, some little local place. Yeah, yeah, it took a while to find 
somewhere to eat, which it doesn't seem like it would. Yeah. It was just hard to figure out where you could park. There were lots of little places, but there was nowhere to park. And so it took a bit just to find a place that looked right, that we could find a parking space. And um, yeah, we found this neat little Mexican restaurant, got some nachos that were insanely huge. So I think we'll have enough for breakfast in the morning before it's time to head to the airport. I'm full, very full. Oh God, so full. And we have plenty left over, so. And with this rental car we got, they make it so easy. We called the guy, or not called him, but messaged him on WhatsApp. We're like, hey, we're in San Jose, everything's on track, ready to link up with you tomorrow to return the car. And so through our coordination, he's actually just gonna come meet us here at the Airbnb um, and then drop us off at the airport. And so that'll be the way we turn in the car. And yep. so our flight leaves at 1.20 and he's gonna meet us here at 10.45. Yep. And so um, it should be simple to get there. We are very, very close to the airport right now. Yep, very close. Uh, just down the street from the International Mall. Yes. Which is really huge. Is it called the International Mall? I thought it's called, called the City Mall. City Mall, International Mall, International. If you look at up on there. Oh, I didn't know. It's massive. But it's big. I don't, I'm not saying that's an international I mean, there's a mall. There's a car but, dealership yeah. in the mall. Yeah, inside. It's inside. not very big, but it's definitely inside the mall. Which um, made us realize cars here are very expensive. Yeah, there was what? One, two, three, what? Four? Maybe four or five? Five cars? Levels. Oh, levels. I'm like, there were yeah. more cars than that. That was like three or four levels to this place. Yeah. Um, it was really big. And yeah. when we thought we had seen it all, we kind of made our way to another side of it, and there was yet more. Um, but nothing, nothing crazy. We didn't find anything that was necessarily uh, a have to have. No, um, but I thought it was interesting how they used their mall space because there were doctor's offices in oh, yeah, there. Yeah. There were banks. Like it was a lot of not only just retail shops and a movie theater and restaurants and like Games, an arcade yeah. and a fitness center, yeah, but also out. like banks and doctor's offices and um, medical equipment supplies. Like it was, yeah. it was very di and a car dealership. Very yeah. diverse, but I honestly thought it was five levels. Yeah, I think it might. It was. Been. It, it was, was wild. It was crazy large, but yeah, um, ridiculous. Uh, but I would hope so because I think it's probably the the big mall that you would find here in San Jose. I think it's the and, mall, right? And honestly, I have no idea because we're in the town of Alawela. I think that's how you say it, close to the airport. And we were just like, hey, let's go find downtown San Jose. It's like an hour to get to downtown San Jose, so who Mostly knows? Mostly because of traffic. Traffic around here is insane. There's so. probably even more malls. I don't even know. This place is huge. Yeah, it is big. Um, and you could probably spend an entire week or more just exploring it all. Um, yes. But one thing we, we kind of wanted to cover tonight was kind of recap the trip, um, talk about the places, but also give some insight into each place in case anybody was interested and said, hey, where should we go uh, based off of our recommendation. So, um, we want to start that and then we can do some other mm -hmm. stuff maybe. And I want to give a shout out to John. He's the one who asked us the question. He had seen some of the pictures we had posted on Facebook and was like, hey, that looks great. Do you recommend this as a place to go on vacation? So it triggered our thought process into going over the map, where all we went, and kind of the um, recommendations in each place, and maybe the types of tourists we saw in each place. Yep. So if um, I'll drive the camera if you want to drive the map. All right, well, let's do this. All right, I'm gonna flip it around, bear with me, looking through this camera, and the words are small. Uh, just hang with me while I figure out where we're at. All right, so we are starting with the map, and I'm gonna zoom in here. And right here is San Jose. This is where we flew in, and this is currently now where we've come full circle and are back to. So take it away, Nick. All right, so first off, we landed in San Jose, and then we moved over to Punta Arenas. Uh, if you remember, if you've watched any of our, our other videos, um, the one big thing is we took public transportation using uh, the bus system and made it there just fine. 
It was actually really easy it's and It's kind of nice fun. and relaxing and you yeah. just got to take, find a seat on the bus and take a nap. And and I think all total it cost us 20 bucks. Yeah. Which might. if we would have paid a private driver, the quote was $165 by a cab. So yeah. 20 bucks on the public bus. It was a, a couple hour trip. It yeah. was a couple hours on the bus. But uh, if you're just looking in, in country and you want to relax to go that direction, it's not a bad way to go. So this is where we, we stayed until uh, the next morning where we ended up uh, getting on our sailboat charter. Yes. And so our sailboat charter really kind of took us through this little Nicoya Bay, Nicoya Bay, or Gulf de Nicoya, I believe that's what it's called. And there's, you can see here, there's actually a ferry route. Um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So, but initially on our sailing trip, we just kind of sailed around. And basically, I think we didn't come much past probably this area right here. We came out a little bit into the open Pacific and then we kind of went back in. And it was the open Pacific where we did the fishing and yep. where we saw the humpback whales. Correct. And they were actually kind of moving in to the bay to kind of, uh, they had, uh, what, a baby? Yeah. Had a baby with them. But anyway, so this was three days just kind of in this area here. Um, and then we went back to Punta Arenas. And so once we, uh, and so Punta Arenas, I would, re I would say, honestly, if you're going there just kind of just to see what's around or you need to get across to the, um, the peninsula on this side, then I'd say worth the trip. Otherwise, it's really otherwise it's village. just a little fishing village and um, cruise ships pull in there and there may be some more to the downtown life uh, that was there. But it really wasn't anything I would say is a must, must see or do. Unless you're on a cruise ship and you land there, um, that's about it. So we got the got in the uh, rental car, we picked it up in Punta Arenas, and then we just headed up to let's see El Coco, all the way up here, and then we spent a couple days in El Coco, which. So El Coco is kind of the first stop that I would recommend. Sorry, um, I'm gonna move a little bit just so you guys can see. So that was quite a drive that time with the ferry. I can't even remember now how yeah, much it okay. was. A total of, sorry about that. So I don't really remember at this point, um, we can go back and reference the videos, but I'm thinking it was like three hours to get from where we landed on the ferry up three, to El three Coco. Three and a half, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, most of it, most of your time is kind of uh, just spent in the winding roads. It's a lot of rural, rural areas. Yeah, there. there were a lot of um, horses and country, and you would see people with cowboy hats. Mm -hmm. I think this is kind of their their old Wild West area. It kind of it's kind of seemed like they had a lot of uh, cowboys. Yeah. In that area, but um, like I said. <clears throat> It's rural, so it's a uh, more agricultural driven uh, environment, this, the, and it's kind of what you would expect of some small town areas on the way to. And then once you get to uh, Coco, El Coco and uh, the Playa del Coco, which is the beach yes. um, up there, once you get there, uh, it gets a little bit um, touristy, I guess. It's not say, terribly touristy. I would say a lot touristy. Well, kind it was of. our first real touristy, aside from um, Turtle Island. Yeah, uh, uh, I, yeah, there's like the or Tortuga, I think. Tortuga. Yeah. That was one of the places we stopped um, whenever we were on the sailboat trip, and mm -hmm. that one was quite touristy. But but once we got to Del Coco, that one there were lots of souvenir shops and mm -hmm. lots of restaurants and um it what you could tell it wasn't a local village like it was it was um a tourist destination definitely so it was definitely a tourist destination uh as most of these places along the coast on the peninsula are um they're they kind of you know it's going to have your normal touristy beach shops and 
uh, some clubs or bars or breweries, um, yeah. and then you know beachfront uh, places to kind of have something to eat and watch uh, the ocean and the water. So um, we spent a couple days there. Uh, that's where we had a nice little uh, Airbnb that was made out of Connex trailers, and yeah. so you can reference those, and we'll we'll get pictures up um, and later as well uh, that we'll post to the channel so you guys can see if you haven't seen them already. Um, but from being there on the Pacific and then going to the Caribbean, there was a contrast. Well, in don't the... jump ahead of us. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll let you do the talking. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, to give you a heads up, I appreciate you mentioning that, but to give you a heads up, really uh, kind of the, the scene in El Coco is uh, it's there's a lot of expats. It's a, a larger expat community that's there. Um, one of the uh, resort places you can actually apply uh, if you have a visa and so forth to stay there long term. And I think the minimum requirement that I remember reading about was you had to have uh, at least an income of a thousand dollars a month um, to be able to to be qualified to to stay in their community. So um, if you're and the crowd was kind of mixed as far as younger and older, but I would say most of them were an older crowd. Um, retired. Else? Yeah, retired. Retired. Although that was the first time uh, of many times on this trip that Nick's been offered. Uh, I'll let you tell the story. <laughs> anyway, um, there's, you know. Marijuana and cocaine is offered on the streets. Apparently, Nick looks um, like the kind of guy who's shopping for marijuana and cocaine. Apparently, it's not because he keeps getting offered it in various cities throughout the country. Yeah. So, in any case, <laughs> no, I did not. Uh, Nobody's ever offered me marijuana and cocaine. Just saying. I did not buy any or purchase any marijuana <laughs> or cocaine from street vendors or uh, drug dealers. I don't know. Or call. anyone. Or anyone, for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm gonna prop this so I can sit. All right, sorry. Just relocating while you continue to tell the story. Oh, sorry, I tripped over one of our souvenirs. Did you cut yourself? No. Nope. All right. Didn't cut myself. Okay. Well. Um, anyway, El Coco, older community, more or less, um, uh, as far as population-wise. Um, Kind of uh, like the beachy cr crowd that wants to go and enjoy time. I'd say more family oriented in that relation, as far as people trying to do stuff with either family, like or you know spouses, or um, did see some kids being you know kind of going around with their parents. Um, prices are, I don't know, they're not they terrible. Seem, yeah. Uh, but you will see like some of the things are kind of pricey. So if you want like a a day sale or you want to go fishing it starts to get a little bit more expensive not to the thousands of dollars but a couple hundred dollars uh, per person to get you out there so um, aside from that there's a few other beaches you can within day's drive that you can go to all around that area I'd recommend uh, taking the drive and kind of moving around um, One thing I'll interject real quick that was very different on the Pacific side with the beach at Del Coco and the beach at Playa Hermosa is how many boats were docked in the bay. Oh yeah. There were, like every inlet, there were lots of boats docked and, not docked, I apologize, anchored. Anchored. Um, and that is in contrast to what we saw on the Caribbean side where there were none. I think it was because the Caribbean side was so shallow, perhaps. But well, that and the area in which we were at, too. True. Think, so. But that was just quite a difference. There's lots of boats, mm -hmm. lots of opportunities on the Pacific side to go out on sailboats, catamarans, fishing boats. Like, mm -hmm. that's one of the big touristy things is to go out on a boat. Yep. Whereas on the Caribbean side, there was, like, one guy maybe with a boat, if I'm even remembering right. Maybe not. Well, maybe small boats. There was much, a whole bunch of... smaller boats. A bunch of smaller boats that, you know, could take you out. Maybe if you want to do a snorkeling or if you want to do some fishing, stuff like that. But uh, definitely not the larger boats that we saw out there on the Pacific side. Um, I will say that in addition to kind of that, that, that um, difference in the um, opportunities and stuff to do, you know, those... There, on the Pacific side, you know, there's whale watching, there's, you're looking for sea turtles, um, 
other you know other wildlife as well but um that is El, El Coco in that, that Pacific area on the, along the peninsula. It's really, um, the main attraction is going to be going to the coast and just kind of exploring those beaches and stuff like that. I will say the beaches aren't bad. Um, obviously it's the Pacific side, so it's going to be a little bit different than on the Caribbean Sea, but um, we'll talk about the differences after that. Um, anything else you have to add about Del Coco, the scene? and kind of what some of the things that people would do that they'd be interested in. No, the only thing I would add though, and I'm going to show you the map again, but the Pacific side of Costa Rica is huge and we only went to a portion. So for instance, the Pacific side, I mean, is this whole area all the way down here? And the part we went to was up here. So our recommendations and perspective is given, oh, even higher from up here. And so it could be totally different than what is down here because one of the other high tourist area is Manuel Antonio, which we mm -hmm. did not go to on this trip, but we spoke to so many people who recommend it. But we yeah. stayed way up here. So just keep that in mind as you're listening to our feedback. All right, so um, let's just talk about where we went from El Coco. So El Coco's here and then we took the the next trip we took was just up here in this area, just north of Liberia. And that's where we did the... Um, the waterfall. What Le, was it called? Le, Le Leona. Le Leona Waterfall yes. is in this area up here. And we just did that as, as a stop on our drive to Monteverde. Yep. And it's, it's along, basically kind of right along the national park in this area, I think. Oh, yeah, there's the lagoon. It may be somewhere in this area, I would rec I'd say. <clears throat> well, that was um, just kind of like a half day, half a day uh, excursion before yeah. we were going to Monte Verde, right? Yes. So yep. on our way to Monte Verde, we stopped at La Leona Waterfall. And then we're on the road again by heading to Monteverde. So we come back, we did some backtracking through Liberia, and then we went down Highway 1, and let's see, where is it at? Monteverde is over here where the circle oh, is. And then we came down and we cut down Highway 1, which was nice, and then there was a road down somewhere around here, or maybe right on, oh, right around here that we had to cut across. And so we just kind of took these back mountain roads to Monte Verde. So Monte Verde, the second, um, well, it was the third place we stayed, but the second kind of long-term kind of let, let's take a look and figure out what they got. So yeah, what do you think about Monte Verde? What's the, what do you think is the main attraction for you? Why would you go there? Uh, well, it's mountains and cloud forests zip lines and hanging bridges and it's a very hippie type town that was really what struck me it's tons of art shops and um organic food and just very much uh everybody's in rain ponchos because it is very chilly up there and it was wet but it was gorgeous it is the mountains and that's where we found the cabin that we stayed in with the most gorgeous view and uh, it was well worth going. If I remember, we stayed two nights there and um, it was fantastic. Like the zip lining was so much fun and um, yeah, I liked it, but that's kind of how I would describe it. It was super windy roads with shops all along the way mm -hmm. um, with just lots of art. Yeah, it's an artsy um, mm -hmm. mountain town. Um, yeah. Demographics, as far as like age-wise, it seemed like there were a lot of younger people that were kind of trying to like the backpack or kind of yeah, you know, kind of just kind of make there were their lots way. Lots of hostels there. Yeah, definitely lots of hostels that are mm -hmm. in town. Yep. Uh, we stayed a couple of kilometers away, but uh, it was actually initially we were traveling it was taking like 20 minutes to travel and i think what did we get down to 10 minutes that last time he began making a race of it on these country roads i wanted to see how long it would actually take for like the locals and so i had to drive like a local yeah i thought i did pretty good it was some crazy driving 
And at first it did feel like we were way out of town. Like it took like 20 minutes. Yeah. But after we made the trip back and forth a few times, it was no big deal. And that's when we really started to just buy groceries and cook in the cabin. And so um, we didn't go out for every meal. And, and just cooking in the cabin was so nice. Yeah, it was good. Uh, it, we enjoyed just being able to get uh, some groceries. And um, it kind of cut down on our having to be to, you know, because we want, you know, we want food or we want dinner. Um, and so that made it kind of nice. So... I would say if you're looking at Monte Verde as a place to go, if you are into nature watching or, you know, nature watching because there's everything from... All the birds. I think it's very yeah, famous for bird watching. Definitely lots of birds. There's a couple famous birds that are in that area. I can't remember what they were. Oh, but, shucks. The but definitely Quetzal. A, yeah, the Quetzal, I think, yeah. which, uh, which is only found in the uh, cloud forest, right? I know it's their national bird, but it's yeah. very rare to see it. Yep. Yeah. So um, some of the areas I believe that uh, was it National Geographic has done some trekking through and and did uh, several um, I don't know stories or created some uh, okay. some stories on from what I've read, and so uh, but it has the, the cloud force, and so I would say nature driven. There's there's some nature places there. Um, as well as adventure driven. So we've got a couple of big companies like, uh, what's it, uh, Salvatore? Yeah. Salvatore Adventures. Big Sky. Big Sky. And Big Sky is actually pretty much all over Costa Rica. I'm not and sure if it's anywhere else in America. companies were both in Monteverde and La Fortuna. It seemed like you could do, um, like even the, the chocolate and coffee tour, oh, the, uh, San Juan, Don Juan, or Don Juan. Don was Juan. in both yep. cities. So it does yep. seem like whether you're zip lining, hanging um, bridges, or the coffee tour, you can do that in either city. Yes. So the one thing about it, I would say, though, um, and we can talk about more when we talk about La Fortuna, um, but there are, there are going to be some specific differences between the towns as far as just the temperature so your your climate in the areas mm -hmm. it's a little bit more elevated i can't remember how high it was exactly um but uh it's a little more elevated and you get i think a little bit cooler weather um they didn't have an ac uh mm -hmm. in the air you know in the airbnb so it led me to think that it probably especially during the rainy season it probably doesn't get that hot and i think uh talking to the coffee grower it stays somewhere in the 70s yeah um almost all year round if not below that so uh so yeah coffee tours um zip lining fabulous and uh if you just want to kind of find a little artsy place to kind of hang out get some coffee yeah do some sightseeing do some bird watching yeah i think it's a great place um so from there we went to la fortuna and We'll show you how we pretty much got there. Um, I'll kind of show you the route and then show you where we went. And it'll be kind of interesting to see that there's actually a big difference between the two. So, all right, so here's Mont Monte Verde. Can I back it up just a bit, just yep. to give perspective of where in the country we are right now? So now point to, uh, yep, and then point to La Fortuna. Well, here's El Coco. Okay. And then this is Punta Arenas where we started. Okay. Well, the first night. And then that's San Jose. Yes. Right? So we came around, went up here, came back here, and then here's La Fortuna right there. Which on the map, they are very close together. We're talking, I don't know, what, 30 kilometers? But you cannot kilometers. drive that. So. Well, yep. each of these squares, I think, is uh, 22 miles, or uh, 22 kilometers. So we're probably 22 kilometers apart, but you can't drive it. There's no direct route. And so if you look here at Monte Verde, Monte Verde is on this side of the mountain. Uh, Volcano Arenal is on this side. So we don't even see it from where we're at. But we left here and then we drove back this way or somewhere down in here. And then we ended up through this little town and then made our way around Lake Arenal to La Fortuna. And so once you make it here, they're at the end of the... Uh, uh, reservoir, you've got a great view of the volcano, and then the whole time you're in this area, you have a great view of the volcano. 
looking back this direction. And it was in between these two towns whenever we got the view of not only the volcano, but all the windmills. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so, uh, and the roads close to Monteverde are very, very, very rough. But by the time you get to the perimeter of the lake, the roads turn out very, very nice, and it's easy, smooth sailing to La Fortuna. Right. So some shocking things that uh, we found were, uh, if you want to... All right. Shocking things that we found as we, we were in Monteverde and then going to La Fortuna is from our cabin in Monteverde, we could actually see the Nicoyan Peninsula or the, the Gulf of Nicoya and the... Um, and the Nicoyan Peninsula from our vantage point. Um, and then we actually, we, we thought we were probably looking at Lake Aronal, but I looked it up and we were just not facing the right direction from our cabin. So it's definitely not the lake. So that was surprising for one, to, to realize that we drove for hours and hours and we were still uh, in view of the Nicoyan uh, Peninsula. And then uh, once we got to La Fortuna, um, just realizing how close we actually were to um, Monte Verde and thinking about how long it actually took us to drive to get there. What was it? Yeah. Half, a, half a day's drive, right? Yeah, it took two, three hours, I think. Three hours yeah, to three, get there. Three hours to get there. Three, three and a half, actually, I think. Um, so La Fortuna, what do you think about that? Oh, my God. I loved the thermal springs. Mm -hmm. I was amazed. I could not get over how fantastic all the thermal springs were. And it was so well worth the cost to get the day pass to that fancy, fancy hotel. Not only to just experience the, the hot springs, but to also just see the contrast of the types of travelers there are. Because here we were staying in an $18 a night bed and breakfast and just getting to come to the fancy hotel to sit in the hot springs. But we were getting to meet the people who were staying in the hot springs and that was their vacation. And it was just fascinating um, to, to just see how different people are when they travel. Right. But I loved the hot springs. Like starting and ending <laughs> each day for two days in a row at the hot springs was phenomenal. And I also loved going to see the waterfall mm -hmm. and just sitting on this giant rock um, where you're at the base of it and you're just looking at the waterfall. I mean, it was, it's just spectacular. And then anywhere you go in the town, you can see the volcano. And yeah. there were tons of other touristy things to do. But since we had done those in Monteverde, we didn't feel compelled to go do them again. So I felt that in La Fortuna, we could really just enjoy the natural beauty. So the natural hot springs, the natural volcano and the natural waterfall. We didn't really have to do any of the extra excursions there to get the, the benefit. Yeah, so I think La Fortuna, uh, again, adventure seekers, there's zip lining, there's uh, ATV tours everywhere there's you a look. There's a lot there for um, adventures. Oh, and the canyoning. tours, canyoning. Yes, to rappel down uh, the waterfalls, yeah. all of that. There's yeah. so much there to choose from. Um, we just didn't choose those things. And the trip. view, and the view and the weather. Okay, yeah. so contrast between Monte Verde and La Fortuna. Uh, you leave the cloud forest and you're in a lower elevation at the base of the volcano. And the weather is more, I would say more what you expect tropical wise. Yeah. It was definitely a lot hotter. Um, we still got some rain through there, but it was more... It felt more tropical than it did yeah. in Monte Verde, where it just felt, um, I don't know, like a high elevation forest, right? Mm -hmm. And and so, uh, like she said, she really liked the uh, the spa. So oh God, I loved it. If you go to La Fortuna and you don't do a day pass for the spas, then I think you're missing out on. Yes, it is maybe perhaps the number one destination location in La Fortuna and La, Fortu La Fortuna I think is yeah. perhaps the number one tourist place okay. in Costa Rica so you have the number one I see. The, the, the number one resort and the number one um, you know tourist uh, destination of Costa Rica so 
I may the be wrong, were so good. but the hot springs were amazing. They were. They and, were amazing. And it's really, uh, I think, I mean, you could definitely go and stay and stay at the resort, um, but if it were up to me, I wouldn't change a thing about it. No. We were able to find the Airbnb literally 200 meters down the road, and if they knew what people were coming there to do, they would change the rate of their place so high. I don't know how we were able to get that deal. It yeah. was incredible. Yeah. Like that, it was a two bedroom house. Two bedroom house. Yeah, no, we didn't have AC, but we did have a fan and we had all the windows that opened up. Um, we even had laundry, with that, a we full had, kitchen. Yeah, a it laundry, was full kitchen. Phenomenal. Um, you could have slept five in the house with comfort. And then and, there's still a couch too. Well, no, no. Oh, you were counting that. I'm sorry. Counting couch. Yeah. Five in the house with comfort. Um, and maybe more if you wanted an air mattress or something like that. So yeah, it was uh, awesome. It was great. And the host host was amazing. Was amazing. Yania. Mm. Yania, she was great. Um, couldn't say more about it. So uh, and there's so much more we did. We did the waterfall, that's another place yeah. uh, to go see while you're there. Um, it was a good visit. So I don't know, there's so much contrast to say uh, that the two aren't worth visiting if you have the opportunity to visit them. Yeah. I would say that, between Monte Verde and La Fortuna. So to move this on, because I know this video is going to be long, we're probably going to spend an hour, I'm guessing this is going to be an hour long. Um, Could have broken up in two parts, but hey, just come back and realize what time you left off, okay? <laughs> uh, so La Fortuna, we say, young crowd, and there is a nightlife in La Fortuna too. We just um, we didn't just really didn't really it. need to because we were hanging at out in the hot springs, the hot springs, or at the house, um, cooking dinner, or cooking yeah. lunch, or cooking breakfast, or something like that. So yeah, um, I'm sure there was a lively night scene. We just didn't partake in that part. But of it. the view of the volcano when it's not covered covered by clouds is amazing, and you realize it's not just like oh, there's this rock out there that looks like it used to be something no it no. looks like a volcano it and like a volcano. it's still active so yeah. um you're at the base of an active volcano i would say if you wanted kind of the feel of what it might be in hawaii because i haven't been but i would say yeah. you you kind of think you're in one of those places so la fortuna was good adventure um outdoor activities hot springs are a must and um Population wise, as far as kind of like uh, who you would expect to see is kind of uh, a mix of young, young and old, but everybody, I everybody. would think every, it's I would bet 90% of the tourists make a trip to La Fortuna. Oh yeah, I think so. So, yeah. um, La Fortuna is definitely a place if you're kind of looking for that scene. Moving on. All right. You want me to drive yep. this? So this was the determining factor. We were kind of what day eight into our vacation maybe i can't remember, I can't remember. maybe anyway, a little later but we're like here's la fortuna and here <laughs> where are we way down here is almost here? to the um nicaraguan border is that it yeah yeah it's it's oh here right here right here yeah, yeah. so look at that so so we were in places from here to here from here to here and then from here to there right but not from here to there. Yeah. And it was intimidating. It's like, are we really going to try to drive that all in one day? Yep. And so, uh, that's where we went. So, let's, let's show them here. Puerto Viejo, Viejo de Telamanca. Yes. Right? That is it. Okay. And so, we stayed in this area right here. Yes. All and right. that huge, long distance was made up of excellent roads. So that whole distance took five hours. So only two hours longer mm -hmm. than just getting between the other des destinations that we had driven between. Definitely. So it, it really, though the map makes it look intimidating, mm -hmm. totally doable. Oh yeah. So um, now the big thing is, is okay, we went from the Pacific to the Caribbean side. Yeah. Um, what's the difference between Puerto Viejo and El Coco, right? Or the Pacific area in general. Um, and I would say the big one is really uh, the beaches, right? right? I mean, Caribbean beaches are renowned because they are amazing, right? 
Not to say that you can't have a great time on the Pacific, and I've spent my time up and down the Pacific coast in the U.S. and now Costa Rica, and um, and it's just it's it, they have nice beaches, but there's something about uh, Puerto Viejo. The water was so oh, warm. Yeah. It was shocking. Like I was shocked. You put your feet in, and it is so warm and inviting. And the sand is beautiful. There were um, white sandy beaches and there were black sandy beaches. It was crazy. It's the first time I've seen black sandy beaches. I collected oh, yeah. some sand to take home as a souvenir. But yeah, um, so the difference between the coastal town that we stayed at in El Coco and the other coastal town on the Caribbean side, I would say really was age demographics were probably oh, the drastic one. difference between the age demographics yeah, we were, were the oldest ones there I would, yeah. we were in our 40s everybody was younger than us unless they were locals yes um but as far as it's it's kind of known for having a night scene um yeah the bars all had uh, not all of them but we could see they had live music mm -hmm. which i hadn't yep. noticed any live music in any of the other places yeah, we some been. live music and uh same kind of what do you call it? Crunchy scene that you kind of yeah would describe as you would find a lot up, more dreadlocks yeah though, on the it, Caribbean kind of side. the crunchy scene you would find up in Monte Verde, but more with the Caribbean twist. And so, if you looked at one of our previous videos, I will say that the the differences in where we stayed. Oh um, gosh! I mean, we were literally in the jungle, and yes. I can't say anything more about it because, like Dory said, we woke up to. Oh um, my gosh. Some wild beast roaring in the darkness. It yes. was amazing. You've got to go back uh, and listen to that. That was this mm -hmm. morning that yep. we were woken up by the monkeys. Oh yeah. Insane. And yep. and it really, um, you can tell when you go back and look at the Airbnb video whenever I first filmed the cabin and I was disappointed because we had just went from a two bedroom house at $18 a night to now this mm -hmm rustic cabin that I didn't know if the animals would stay out of the cabin. Surrounded by wildlife Surrounded. and insects. Surrounded. And, and it wasn't yeah. that I thought the kitchen was dirty so much as I just knew there was no way they could keep stuff from crawling all over those dishes. Oh, yeah. And so it's just, we were so into nature mm -hmm. and um, it just took me a little bit by surprise, but in the, it ended up being absolutely one of the greatest places. Like and it was, I when we arrived, it was it. raining. Yeah, we arrived. It was raining. It has so a nice still, wet dog feel. Yeah, and I, I said that in another yeah. video. So, like, I, I, I won't, I'm not going to recant it. I think it's some pretty yeah. good analogies. It's like a wet dog. Like, yeah. if you, you have, you could have the most pretty dog, but once it gets wet, you're like, mm, stay off me until it's yeah. dry again. Um, and that's kind of that's that's kind of Puerto Viejo, right? So, um, but uh, aside from that stuff, you're looking for beaches, though, right? Oh God, so they're nice. They're beautiful. Jungle meets the sea. That's that's what it's yes. what's about. And, and it was crazy because there's no huge developments, like yeah, no huge yeah. hotels. Yep. Like it's all locally kind of. I don't yeah. know if it's owned, but it's just kind of like the they left the jungle intact yeah. for the most part. It's like the jungle. They kind of carved themselves the into sea. the jungle, and almost every little resort, every little you know set of cabinas. Uh, everything is kind of just tucked into the jungle, in between the jungle and the sea. And there were no chain restaurants at all. Like everything was its own yeah. individual. Like there were no McDonald's, no KFCs, no Papa John's. Like it was just individualized businesses mm -hmm. that were likely owned by locals. And yeah. it, it just felt authentic, absolutely authentic. And it did truly, and everything we've done and seen, that's the one place we'd want to bring the kids. Yeah, I think like so. that would be so uh, fun because you get the real feel of it, and it's not like you're being nickel and dime to death to do all these adventure tours. Not that the adventure tours are bad, but every single one adds yeah, to the cost. Yeah. Here, you just enjoy nature, mm -hmm. enjoy the beach, and and you really just go um, find your own spot. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was so hard to say goodbye to it this morning. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. I, the water oh, is crystal it. clear. Um, the opportunities to do stuff is. is Definitely there. People fish there. And the one thing people I would say, there. I'd heard some people talking at breakfast, and the one adventure thing you can do is whitewater raft. Oh, yeah. It's and a little so, bit on the other oh side, gosh. but yeah. They were talking about it, and I just was tiny bitty eavesdropping, 
but it sounded amazing. It so sounds like I had, had a good time. Ever we were there again for longer, I would want a white water mm -hmm. raft. I think it's the Procura River is the one that they do, but it sounded like they were literally on the verge of being thrown out of the raft. Like it was wild and mm -hmm. great. And yep. so, yes, very, very interesting that I'd love to try that. Oh next yeah. Time. So there's just a, um, you know, just like on any coastal area, there's a, uh, a series of beaches up and down different names, but, uh, they all kind of connect. Yeah. Um, we actually took a walk all the way back to, uh, Puerto Viejo. Um, along the beach, it was a couple miles, I think, and it was good. Um, but like I said, so there's so much to do. You could definitely stay active. I, I would recommend it for, you know, taking the family and just having a yeah. place to kind of, I don't know, relax and get away from uh, all the hustle and bustle. But if you wanted to, you know, kind of explore the nightlife too, um, they have that scene there as well. So, yeah. Um, I would, we passed through Puerto Limon. Um, but we Just didn't necessarily, we kind of skirted the edge of it. So I can't really say much about it, but I would think that it's a, being a larger area, um, you would probably have some more accommodations and maybe more of a, uh, kind of like an American style kind of, you know, beach scene versus, but I don't know for sure. Yeah, so I'd have I to, know. I'd have to say you, you might do some research on that one. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. I realized that whenever I said we were at um, Puerto Viejo, we were close to Nicaragua. That's Panama. Nicaragua is the northern border. I see. Yeah. Sorry about that. We were very, very close to the Panama border. Definitely close to Panama. So that really kind of con concludes kind of what the differences are. But yeah. um, what would you think? What do you think is your, do you have a favorite? I, oh, I think it's hard gosh. for me. It is very hard. The because one thing it, I can say is that there was no bad spot. Oh, yeah. Every yeah. single place we went mm -hmm. was fantastic. I yep. don't think you could make a wrong choice. It yes. is such a beautiful, beautiful country. So I would say that, I mean, obviously, if you're looking for something on the water, don't pick an inland place. But uh, <laughs> uh, if you want something where you're just looking to get away and enjoy, that you can do a bunch of different stuff at. I mean, try, you know, you could do something inland um, and, and feel like you had uh, a good time. Um, uh, Puerto Viejo, uh, Be Viejo um, is pricey. It was definitely pricey. The souvenirs were. And um, yeah. so I can't say that I have a favorite, but I will say that um, each place kind of had its own little charm to it. Uh, if I were going to pick between the Caribbean side and the Pacific side from the peninsula area, I would probably go to the Caribbean side. I would too. I'd pick the Caribbean. Um, until I got bored and then I'd get just cross the country and I'd go to the Pacific side. Yeah. But um, uh, aside from that, no. Um, favorites, they all have their own special charm and character to them. Uh, what do we say? You know, I made a comparison earlier on like Monte Verde is kind of like a, I don't know, Estes Park, Vale, kind of artsy, small artsy mountain, uh, town. mountain town. And then La Fortuna is kind of like a base. Like it's on the, the front range of a mountain or the back range of a mountain. Um, kind of like maybe Colorado Springs where it's just a little bit, uh, you have a little bit more opportunities in just than being in the mountains. So, um, but everything is really close if you want to go do that. So, and that's kind of what La Fortuna offers. Um, I did notice that on um, the Caribbean side, there were less people who spoke English. Like oh, yeah, in the yeah. in like the bigger touristy areas mm -hmm. of La Fortuna, Monteverde, El Coco, like people could speak English. Somebody nearby could, but mm -hmm. but in Puerto Viejo, a lot of people just didn't. The the vendors of the stores didn't, and it was kind of fun just trying to figure out how to communicate. Yeah, I had fun. At, I was mm -hmm. like, uh, we went downtown, or da not downtown, but down to the. Um, the city last night and uh, I was practicing all my Spanish downtown yeah. so um, but it's just a, nice to you know actually be able to say something in Spanish and get what you ask for uh, yeah and it was kind of fun um, that and the howler monkeys I will say uh, they were all over the country so if you're looking for howler That's monkeys true. we saw them on both sides and we saw sloths uh, a lot of places on both yeah. sides all across the country um, yeah, I think you can get the nature anywhere. Yeah, yeah, it's really uh, some of the nature will be different depending on where you're at, but but definitely. 
Um, one thing, I have a caveat, and oh. I wanted to talk about it. It's really kind of talking about the, the Golf de Nicoya, right? So the, uh, the bay uh, near Puteranus. Um There is so much that's there. They have an island that used to be an old prison, and it's like a museum, and you can arrange to go do a tour there. Yeah. Uh, they, we saw whales there. We went snorkeling there. Um, we went fishing there. We went sailing there. I mean, we had, and that three days, I mean, honestly, you could pack an entire vacation into Yeah, that. it was incredible. And, I mean, we went kayaking and all these things. So, we're not going to do this one on this video, but we will do kind of like a recap on all the activities that we got to cover in the next video, just to kind of make sure we tie up all the loose ends. But there's just so yeah. much. We've been here for two weeks, and there's just so much that we have done. Um, and we kind of were jokingly thinking about like add this to the list so we could just check it off and add it to it because it was available. We had the opportunity to, but we just kind of, you know, we kind of stepped back and just relaxed and did our things and let things come naturally. Yeah. We didn't want to force it, right? Um, so that was kind of the thing. Just want to recap on there is a lot to do in the Gulf of Nicoya. Yeah. Um, not to miss that, but I would say go visit that video of the day one through three or the videos yeah. of day one through three. And that'll kind of even give you a recap of that. Um, and if you're looking at uh, kind of what's more information or what we kind of our initial thoughts on the uh, uh, El Coco, go to days, what, three or four and five, I think. I think so. Four or five or six. And then Monte Verde, six yeah, and seven. Yeah, all of them. Yep. You can eight, go get nine, a deep dive. Yep. One other video we do plan to do once we're back home is a by the numbers video where we actually go through how much money this vacation cost, not only going through the numbers of dollars and cents, but going through the numbers of when we get home and step on the scale because we have been <laughs> eating like crazy and haven't exercised at all. Like that was a waste of time for me to pack uh, exercise clothes because aside from just hikes and stuff, um, I have not deliberately done any exercise. Mm -hmm. And there's been gyms in every town we went to, but I just don't want to do that. I want to go see and do stuff, not just go like try to get some fitness in. I'll but we that. got we got some definitely got some steps in. Definitely yeah. got we did a lot of swimming in some of those places. Yeah. Um, some of the places had a lot of stairs, yeah. uh, elevation change, a lot of walking. So let's just we did get some exercise. We got some exercise. But I imagine the scale may not be nice to us when we get home. So I think we'll... we may be surprised. We'll check in yeah. and give you all the numbers, what this costs, um, and everything else, and then just kind of uh, figure out what we'll be covering next after this. Yeah. So I'm trying to think. I mean, we got a few minutes. I want to. We're gonna try to make it this hour, but there was a couple oh, of things. I don't want to stretch it out too long unless we've got quality. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what he hadn't done yet is demonstrate his howler monkey howl. Oh, I haven't got there yet. I still have. Oh, you have I've nothing drank left. One of these. Um, he practiced. The whole time I was driving, you uh, are going to give our fans a taste of uh, this newfound <laughs> talent that he has demonstrated. And to realize how spot on he is, you need to go back and listen to the video I don't know if I'm spot morning. on. I'm, I got I to gotta go re-listen to it. But uh, in any case, I will say that um, is there anything else that we want to add to the differences or the main activities that you think we could do in each area or well, honestly what we did there is a great Facebook group called um, Costa Rica travel tips and resources and so each time we'd get to a new city I would just search that group for uh, the city we were in and it would have feedback from other travelers of the best restaurants and things to do and that's kind of how we uh, chose where to go, especially when it came to eating, because people have like picked out the best restaurants in each town. And that's how we found that amazing restaurant in La Fortuna mm -hmm. um, that starts with a J. Jal Jalapas. 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 I said it wrong in the video, but I corrected it in Jalapas, the um, in the description. So yeah, it was phenomenal, but that's how we found it. Yeah. And so the key is really just checking those resources. Things are so easy now with mm -hmm. the internet everywhere, oh, Wi-Fi yeah. is everywhere. There was only, the only time we really didn't have phone coverage was when we were driving through the mountains. Otherwise, every Airbnb has had Wi-Fi. Every restaurant you go to, they give you the Wi-Fi password. Like, there's no problem with staying connected while you're traveling. Yeah, actually, that was something I was pretty impressed with was even in some of the areas that seemed more rural, um, our phones generally worked 
there's a few places like especially in elevation that were kind of sketchy coming back through uh the mountains towards san jose this afternoon we had some no service areas I will say that prior to arrival, we did call AT&T mm -hmm. and add the international plan um, because uh, to let them know we'd be out of the country and it charges us $10 a day per, yep. well, $10 a day for the first phone, $5 for the second. Yep. That way we can have unlimited use of our phones while we're here. And if you didn't want it to work like that, or you could turn on your airplane mode as long as it doesn't connect to a tower. Um, you don't get charged for that You don't get charged day. for it, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, not a terrible deal, I think. You know, if you're going to use it for any considerable amount of time, that it's worth worthwhile of switching over to that or turning that on. Oh, I thought of something. Is there anything you're homesick about? Like you've now been uh, here 14 days. Anything you're homesick about or missing from home, aside from our kids, of course. But um, anything you're missing. The only thing I could think of is water pressure and hot showers. Although the last few places last few have places had, we've hot, had showers. hot showers, honestly, but yeah, ever um, since the cabin in Monteverde, we've had hot showers. But well, here's the thing, too: uh, doing your dishes is different because you don't have hot water. Oh yeah, there's no hot water at the kitchen uh, sink, and so, there's no dishwashers. Like and there's no dishwashers, uh, septic tanks for a lot of places. Or you cannot throw any toilet paper in yeah, the toilet. Yeah, none. Those types anywhere. Of uh, take, and that is a hard habit to break. You don't know because you don't use toilet paper every single time you go to the bathroom. It is a hard habit to break. There's signs everywhere and I'll still accidentally throw the toilet paper in the toilet. Yeah. So um, those are just some of those small things, you know. I thought of two things that I missed. Go ahead. Heavy whipping cream in my coffee. Because at home I always whip up the heavy whipping cream and add it to my coffee. Right. So I do miss the heavy whipping cream. And I miss... My Oculus and doing Supernatural. <laughs> That's my uh, guilty addiction. She I miss her that, workout. but that will not work outside the U.S. and Canada. So I knew not to even bring it. Yeah. Not that the, the Oculus things. won't work. But oh, but the Supernatural app the will app not work. Will not work um, because of internet connectivity. I think. No, they have a, a licensing thing. It will not work. Um, remember, I took it to Mexico and it wouldn't work. I took yeah, it to the licensing thing. Belize, they, yeah, because of the yeah. music, they don't have it licensed or yeah. something. It only works in like the United States and Canada. So, in any case, um, interesting facts about uh, about the metaverse. Again, um, I think that's that kind of wraps it up. Yeah. Um, it's time for the howler monkey. Uh, time for the howler monkey. All Get right. ready. Let's see if I can do this. Um... <laughs> it is spot on. Like you don't even know. Go back and listen. <laughs> but that was my five hour drive today is listening uh... to that and him trying to talk me into trying it. Oh Lord. The secret we found is you've got to make the sound as you're sucking air into your body it's a very you can't guttural make the sound, sound pushing the air um, out <laughs> i don't think i do it any justice but i'm gonna keep practicing until i get it right because you can get those howler monkeys going and if you just oh, even if you don't God. know where they're at just make start making those noises and they're going to start talking back to you um i i think we must end it on that note yeah. there's no way to get any better after that <laughs> Oh, well, thank I hope you, I made her you, day. Thank you. Yeah, that definitely. was too funny. So this is the conclusion of day fourteen. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow we fly home. Yep, we're in I San could Jose. Stay here forever. It has been amazing. I really love this country. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you guys, and uh, yeah, put some comments in there if you have any questions. We'll be happy to answer them. All right, have a great night.